Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Factorio Space Age. I almost called it The Factory Must Grow, but that's the name of the podcast. Um, but yeah, so in our last episode, we got purple and yellow science running nicely. They're still humming along. We are completely out of plastic, though. I mean, almost. And the reason for that is being low on oil. So let's go upgrade our oil pumping. You can see that even these four aren't running full time, so we definitely need more. Um, and we're going to need to make some rocket fuel, too. Yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, the podcast, The Factory Must Grow, is generally on the first and third Sundays of the month, though depending on the guest, that may shift a little bit. And I host it live on Twitch, but then also upload the VODs to Crydex Extra, which is my second YouTube channel. And then if you just open up your podcast app, you should be able to find it there too. So we talk about all sorts of things, usually Factorio, though we've discussed, we've had some guests on to talk about other factory games too, which has been cool. Obviously, we've been keeping up with the FFFs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 oil derricks we're going to need here. Pump jacks, whatever they're called. Maybe I should automate those? Um, well, I kind of want to automate them. There's two of the things, and then this is another. Ah. <laughs> Dave, you have a podcast? Tell me more about it. Ah, oh, thanks. That nice little subtle, subtle marketing. Um, but yeah, the podcast is honestly a really fun thing. It, it, it blew up more than I thought it would. I mean, it's not like massively popular or anything, but it's definitely been something that a lot of people have gotten a lot of joy out of, and that's been cool to see. And it's just been a lot of fun to hang out with people from the community and get to like interview them and hear their thoughts on stuff. And so it's it's been fun. Um, this is getting messy, but that's what this game is all about. Look, this is all part of the plan. This, this was always the plan. <laughs> all right, pump jacks automated, it's official. We did it. We did it. Um, all right, let's do one stack of those. Uh, do they stack to 50? Stack to 20? 20? What stacks to 20? What random? What the heck? Nothing stacks to 20. That's so weird. Everything is 10 or 50. Or 5, in the case of locomotives. What else stacks to 20? Is there anything else that stacks to 20 in the entire game? I mean, there probably is, but that's really funny. That's really funny. Alright, I needed 17, I said. Uh, pump jacks have always been 20. Well, that doesn't change the fact that I'm so confused on why anything stacks to 20 when it feels like everything else is 50 or 10. But, uh, that being said, we should be good to go now. So, we'll run down there, get these set up. Uh, we are gonna need a pump, probably, yeah, to connect this network to that network, because that one's already as big as it can get. As far as pollution, I don't need to worry about it, because we've already taken care of the bases in this area. So, we'll have to do a, a clearing with the tank along that front at some point, but we're still a little ways away from that. Uh, petrochemical buildings are 22. No, they're not. Kim plants are 10. And oil refineries are 10. Ooh, offshore pumps are 20. There you go. There's another thing that stacks to 20. I think that, again, might be the only thing, because boilers are 50. Steam engines are 10. <laughs> You're running a command that lists everything that stacks to 20. I mean, there might be new things in Space Age, but uh, as far as I, my guess is that it's only offshore pumps and pump jacks and maybe some of the random new Space Age stuff. Even regular pumps stack to, 
50. Um, yeah, I bet that's it. Okay, now I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna be a little uh, obnoxious to set up. So I think for simplicity, I'm gonna make them all face down unless they can't like that one or that one. And then maybe that one I'll face up because it's the very bottom. And then because I don't need to walk or oh, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. I did automate substations uh, between episodes while we were eating a delicious burrito for a 12 hour stream. So we automated those over here because substations are nice. So now we have those. And substations are going to be something that I'm very excited about getting quality upgrades to. Um, because, you know, having that bigger... What's... Actually, what's the upgrade? Yeah, it upgrades two more spaces, which is huge. Oh, well, I guess that's only one more radius, though. So it's not quite as huge as it seems. But still, pretty good. I mean, the legendary ones are going to feel like those pylons in space exploration, yeah. Uh, set up defenses soon, I think, before going to space. Maybe. Or I can just clear out biters for days. And leave a remote tank available in case of emergency. Alright, so because I don't need to traverse this. I think I'm okay with a lot of pipes, though. I don't have enough. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about um, having stack sizes lower is not overproducing. But 20 feels so random because so many other things are 10. It feels like 10 tends to be the norm for buildings like this, rather than 20. Um, so it, yeah, it just feels a little like non-standard to have a couple things be 20 when everything else is 10 or 50. And <laughs> just lose your base on Navis. Well, I won't be on a second planet. So, so something that I don't think was made entirely clear by the FFFs. Going to space does not mean going to another planet. There is a whole phase of building a space platform and collecting asteroids to make space science that comes before going to another planet. Now, going to another planet comes after that, but you need a thousand space science to even research the ability to go to another planet. And so, and then you're gonna need to set up thrusters on your space platform and stuff. So it certainly is not like, oh, we just go to Fulgora. It's like, well, no, you gotta set up your space platform and space science and then after you do all that, then you could go to Fulgora. Um, so it's kind of like going to a planet is phase two of space. And there's a whole phase one first. All right, they all seem to be running, so that's good. So now we'll bring that over. Uh, all the planets have the same uh, science price. I'm like 90% sure, yes. Always zoom out before crossing train tracks. Just proper safety precautions. I think that's OSHA. <laughs> yeah, and then of course you have to decide, are you gonna do the yellow and purple science because they're not required for going to other planets, but you can get a lot of good stuff with yellow and purple science that you might want on the other planets, like beacons or yellow assemblers or things like that. Um, so that's certainly worth considering. All right, so there's our pump. That will fill up our other network, which will then... Wow, it actually did fill up the other network. And then that should be emptying out on this end. Somewhere up here. Yep. Yay! <coughs> all of the new buildings all stacked to 20. That's hilarious. So nothing stacked to 20 before, except for cliff explosives, offshore pump, and pump jack. But now there's a bunch. I don't think rocket fuel stacked to 20 before. It's stacked to 10, I think, right? 
What was Rocket... Or did they change that in like 1.1 or something? Hey, Frog Burr. Frog Beer. Beer. Thanks for the follow. Uh, you think I might have two pipe networks in the new field? Uh-oh. Uh, no. I think we did it. There's this underground right there that maybe you didn't see. Otherwise, that would have been a problem. But yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. I didn't drive the tank down there, did I? Did I drive a tank and forget it? No. Rocket fuel and beacons stacked to 10 before. Yeah, okay. So they changed a few things to 20. But all that to say... So, wait, were pump jacks 10 before the update? Maybe now there's just, there's a lot more things at 20 because of space age. Yeah, spectralized. The new pipe uh, visualizer is so great. I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, so let's get some more uh, of this action going on. I guess we need to copy two at a time. So let's get all this set up as if I was going to copy two at a time. Wait a second. That's not right. I mean, I guess it is. I just don't need that part. some more robot coverage here. They've always been 20? So weird. So pre-Space Age, there were only like three things that were 20. That's super weird. <laughs> yeah, Coniferous, now that we can mirror it. I don't know why we don't have lamps here. But now that we can mirror these things, it's so great. Don't have to space them all out. Oh, you know, the bots are never going to bring those refinery. Oop, because we don't have any. So that's going to be a problem. Um, let's request some basic stuff here. I would like 100 gears. I would like 100 pipes. The undergrounds. I would like uh, implants. Ten. I would like. What was I doing? Oh, materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, circuits. Red circuits. And electric engines, which I have not provided anywhere, but I will. So then electric engines, we can do pretty easily Just like that. Mirroring works for mods right out of the box. That is so nice. Uh, super duper nice. And then what else was I going to do? I was going to set up the provider chest for something. Radars. So oh, that's not what I was going to do. Mm. Oh, the pipes? No, we already did the pipes. All my inserters. Do steel furnaces. It was something else. We've already got steel, copper, and iron. Oh, was it red circuits? It might have been red circuits. That's what it was. How are we doing on quality, by the way? We've almost got 100 quality red circuits. You could do advanced oil without a gap. It was super annoying because you had to do the, like, you know, undergrounds like this kind of trick. But, yeah, you could do it. Personally, I just miss advanced fluid handling from, you know, modded Factorio, which I'm sure I'll go back to using after a while. 
I think for mod packs, it certainly earns its keep. I think for vanilla, this will be fine. Okay, so what do I not have? That's what it is. I was like, what? We've requested everything under the sun, except for stone brick, and I don't think I have stone brick buffered anywhere in the chest. So let's get that. Actually, this is a good home for that. Um, and then concrete, I was about to say, you need lots of concrete sometimes, so let's get a lot of that buffered. But... That should let me build more refineries here. Now, cracking-wise, we're probably not going fast enough. Oh, thank you. That was a bad pipe underneath me. I think we're all good now. How's it going, Dorian? All right, so that is now, how many? Eight? So that's eight of these. That gives me 72 loyal and 40 hoyle. 40 hoyle goes to 30, so we have about 102. Also, I only need two heavy oil crackers at most, but I have 102 per second light oil, and these can only handle 15 a piece. So I need definitely more. keep not working. I feel like something's off. Feels like I should just be able to copy this and put it down here. Okay, that's not working. Alright, so there's plenty of light oil cracking, I think. Yeah, that's 10. Power is good. Oh, by the way, I made a solar panel field. <laughs> Forgot to mention that. Um, uh-oh. Now, what is this nonsense? They must have expanded again, little turds. Where did y'all expand to? Oh, I didn't mean to leave that on, but it's gonna be somewhere over there, I bet. Or maybe up here. <laughs> um, turn that back off. I don't wanna be that cheaty. But yeah, it's probably this chunk right there is sus. Um, yeah, expansion is kind of annoying. <sighs> so we're going to have to maybe get laser turrets automated and just build a perimeter of laser turrets for when we leave. I know, was Alor, were you the one pushing me to make defenses, a perimeter wall? We might actually have to do something like that. Um... Ooh, qua uncommon speed module. Look at this. Yeah, being able to mirror things in mod packs is going to be dope. Ooh, a rare productivity module. A rare productivity module is basically a prod mod too, without the extra speed and energy penalty. Look at that. The best defense is a good defense. <laughs> Uh, you guys are the worst. All right, um, tank. I do need some more of my ammo, which is somewhere over here. I can put those in provider chests too. Oh, they already are. Look at me go. All right, lots of explosives. That might be enough. Gosh, that's so much damage. That's a full 30. They actually do deal 30% more damage. The best defense is a good fence. The problem with a wall is a wall doesn't do anything other than just let them kill it. Like, it's not... A wall is not a defense against biters. You need really just a... A thin string of laser turrets would be more. Yeah, these things are insane. Those are like uranium bullets. How much does a uranium ammo deal? Uh... 
24. Oh my god. Imagine legendary quality uranium rounds. That's going to be like 60 damage before bonuses. So at this point, they'd be dealing like over 100 damage a piece. That's insane. Um, anyway, back to this. I should probably make some solid fuel somewhere just to have provided to me. No, no, no. The wall is good if you have enough biters attacking you. With the settings we're on, I don't think we're ever going to get big enough attacks that we're going to need a wall. I think a, a thin string of laser turrets is going to be plenty in most cases. Also, prod modding the labs is a reasonable idea. It does make my research is a good bit cheaper. But where are these stupid little, little turds? They're over here somewhere. There they are. Get out of here. You know, one of the best things of this tank might be the increased range on all the turrets. Having that extra, what is it, three or four range on the cannon, super nice. Farm biters until you have enough that you need a wall. <laughs> there you go. Hey Alexis, thanks for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Oh, there's another base right there. Jeez, that was a, that one must have expanded. It was a double expansion that happened. It was a double expansion. Also, can we talk about how awesome it is that quality increases range on turrets? So being able to have like uncommon laser turrets, they're gonna have so much range. It's gonna be great. Okay, so now that's gone. I mean, while I'm here, I might as well take out this big one and then it won't expand as much. I like how trees are just a suggestion to the tank. Oh, hey, here's grass, 1.1. Okay, that's not... Dirt, sand is already 0.92. So the tile, okay, I was under the impression grass absorbed a lot more than sand. It really doesn't. It only absorbs about 20% more. So it's really the trees that do the absorbing, not the grass. I think I was under the impression that the grass itself did a lot of the absorbing in more moisture heavy environments, but that is incorrect. These shields are really carrying it for me. This would be a much harder battle without shields in this tank. Oh, also I completely forgot we have blue circuits now so I can make exoskeletons. Can you use the search function for biter bases? Spawner. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. What are they called? I think they're just called spawners, right? Yeah, that's not showing up. Nest. I don't, yeah, I don't. They're called yeah, spitter spawner and biter spawner. They're not called nests. All right, it does feel good to steamroll the biters, though. Let's be honest. have a nest under radar coverage, you could probably search for it. Well, we can test that real quick. Nope. Nope. Now, once you've captured a nest, you might be able to search for it. Because that might count as your own building. Hey, Gotokoto. Thank you for the follow. Oh, there's water. Found the water. Excuse me. Oh, 
Also, the cannon upgrade for firing speed was like 90% for just the first one. Do you think the other ones are that much? Because if we get a couple more upgrades of that rate, the cannon is going to be a machine gun. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, the next one's another 80%. That's awesome. That is awesome. Wait, why does it... Oh, plus 150%. So right now it's 1.8%. And then it'll go to 3.3. Oh my gosh, it'll double it almost again. That's crazy. That's gonna be cool. I knew I knew they had buffed the cannons, but that's significant. All right, so we've taken out a lot more biters. I'm already here, so I might as well go west and take out that one. Just less things that can expand onto us. Goodbye, Mr. Bot leave you in the distance. We'll call him Tim and abandon him. Poor Tim. He'll catch up someday. Bites the dust. Guess we'll just keep going along this front. How many more ammos do we have? Eh, we got enough. We still have over 200. And this tank ain't stopping. Though fuel. Uh, fuel. How's fuel? We still have 15. Really should have grabbed more solid fuel before we left. Might have to drive on some trees. And I don't mean through some trees. <laughs> I do mean what I said. <laughs> Quick, collect some fuel in case of emergency. Um, oh, well, speaking of trash slots. Aw, oh, the little Mars rover is doing a great job. Me not researching anything pains you. Well, you know what it doesn't pain is my copper and iron and steel production. So, I'm letting things back up nicely. Oh, you know what I didn't do, though? I did screw up. Hold on. I do acquiesce to uh, agree that we screwed one thing up with our new research, which was not putting any buffers in. I did mean to do that. So it is backed up because there's not even a single, what is going on here though? This is not good. This should be backed up. Um, so I guess it's just the way things are being prioritized. The blue circuits have to back up before we start seeing the purple science? Interesting. Anyway, I do want something like this. Super force build. Actually don't want those. And then limit. Oh, no, I'm a dummy. That's gonna go wrong. Both types of science are on that belt. Uh, Look, if it makes sense, it makes sense. Um, that's not how that works. Like, inserter chest dyslexia just happened to my brain. Alright, there we go. Okay. And power. 
You don't think a full belt would be enough? Um, we did check on all the belting. All the belting of this is okay. Probably the copper isn't. But we checked on the, the everything after the copper and iron. We have enough belt space for. So if this was a full 15 a second green circuits, we would be okay. Like if this whole chain was running, then this would all be running along with this. But the problem is I just don't have enough copper. So copper is the issue there. But I digress, we must keep shooting. Just keep shooting, just keep shooting. Sidewinder drive a little bit so we're not as predictable. Boom. Get out of here. Nice. How big is this copper patch? 11 million? Dear goodness. Imagine mining that with legendary big drills after mining productivity 10 has been researched. Like, it's just gonna be absurd. It's gonna be absolutely absurd. That would basically be, I don't even know, maybe more than 100 million worth of copper. So did I get the achievement or am I 90% of the way to getting the achievement? I'm unclear. It showed nine out of 10. <laughs> I know what we can do to fix that. Okay, well, if it wasn't 10 before, it's 10 now. So, what's going on with my shields? Oh, I guess it's more just like, what's going on with me not repairing things here? There we go. Double down. have power, so I guess the shields are just recharging so fast I'm not noticing it. Yeah, okay. They just charge really fast. Alright. And that does it. That does it. We are pretty far out from anything. And even that base over there, it's a little risky. Oh, Tim! Tim! <laughs> Who knew? I wonder how long it's gonna take him to get back to us. Uh, yeah, only quality, it doesn't stack. Different qualities don't stack. Tim is that little construction bot that could. <laughs> Hopefully he can. Uh, we left him behind. And he's long been out of battery, so he's working on his uh, elbow grease and tears at this point. All right, let's go grab some more fuel. Also can use this opportunity. Get some more of this stuff and maybe some more RoboPort coverage while we're at it. And we can build up some fuel and then we can request some fuel so that I always have enough to drive the tank. Perfect. Yeah, apparently each drone has the tiniest little solar panel that somehow is capable of causing it to fly. And it has just the right amount of accumulator to charge the battery enough to keep it running throughout the night. <laughs> or the moon is really bright. Yeah, exactly.
All right, now, what are we gonna do? We did more oil. We can check that off of our list. And then we need more coal. So I guess we do that next. And... I think we do that by copying this. Over here. And that. Ooh, that's horrific. Um, just super force build right there and redo our oil. Super Force build is so cool that it just pops those undergrounds there for me. Love it. Uh, elevated rails? Sure. We got purple science now. Also, wait, we gotta parameterize this BP. Hold on. How do, how do we do that? Parameterize, reconfigure this guy. This guy is a parameter. Parameter zero. Everything else does not need to change. This is the ore type. So now I can place that. If I set that to deconstruct and then I go to place it, why is it not asking me the parameter? Did I not parameterize you? Did I not save it? What's going on? Uh, zero, that, okay. Save blueprint. Maybe I didn't save blueprint. I've struggled with blueprint saving before. Yeah, here we go. Parameter zero. So parameter zero is gonna be coal. Now here's the real question. Can you just parameterize something and then paste it back over just to change what you've already got. Like if you didn't want to go through the pain of changing a bunch of decider combinators that have a bunch of things. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna check some things. Have we messed with interrupts yet? No, we have not. <laughs> All right, so let's say you've got, you know, various uh, combinators. And they've got all sorts of different things in them. But one thing is your filled heavy oil barrel. You decided, oh no, that wasn't supposed to be a filled heavy oil barrel. That was supposed to be a little empty light oil barrel. So you bring it down here, you hit parameterize, you hit that button, you change it to light oil barrel, And then you save it and it just changed all the places that that was that? You don't even need to parameterize it? And then if you want to change that to anything, you can just change it to a parameter, paste it back over, and then I'm like, oh yeah, everywhere there's a heavy oil barrel is now a steam engine. Whoa, that's so cool. So basically, even if you just hit the wrong button on a bunch of stuff, you can now fix it really easily by doing that. Super cool. All right, so what is unhappy down here? We've got combinators, train stop, and train signal stuff. But yeah, not needing to redo a blueprint is so cool. Like, even if you haven't parameterized it, you can just change all of the entries. Like, oh, if I didn't like, if I didn't like having the green, the green box, I could just change this to a red box right here without even having to set it as a parameter. Oh man, that's cool. That's really neat. I am digging that. All right, fuel continues on. My heart and my fuel must go on. 
All right, and then let's see. <laughs> Should we do it? <laughs> Should we do it? Yeah, we're doing it. Oh, come on. The loop de loop. It's just too beautiful. We can't we can't not do it. Um <laughs> Because there's only one train that's going to go over there. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm letting it happen. Um, there's only one train at a time into these, into these areas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, the game told me to do it. Look, I, I'm just playing the game the way that... I'm just playing the game the way they told me to play. Oh, I ran out of rails. Um, oh, but it knew I ran out of rails. Look at it go. Yeah, train network where you're only allowed to use the planner. Um, I need to request RoboPorts. Look, it'll work fine. Train will come in, go around, whoop, straight to where it's supposed to go. Um, <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. It's so bad. All right, and then I probably should put another signal like right here. And then these should not be the same. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. Okay. So for those who are joining who don't know anything about rail signals, just a quick explanation. Blocks. Uh, rails are separated into blocks, and you can see the blocks with these colors. Every time you place a signal, it basically slices uh, the block next to it into two blocks and essentially a block can only be occupied by one train. So if I have a train here in this magenta block station, then a train will stop at this signal because the block in front of it is full. As soon as this train moves on and the block is empty, then this train can move on. So signals themselves are actually quite simple. If you can see the blocks, you know what train signals are going to do. The confusion is with chain signals, and what chain signals do, in short, and I swear if somebody says they copy the signal in front of them, then I'm gonna flip the table because that doesn't help understand anything. What a chain signal actually does in terms of human understanding is it checks essentially along the path the train is wanting to go, and it asks, are all of those blocks open up until the next train signal? So a chain in front of a train signal is basically not asking, is this block open? Though it is asking that. It's asking, is this block open? So it won't actually pass this chain signal until this area is open. And so you can see how that's useful because then you could have a whole intersection happening right here. And then it'll say, hey, don't go past this point unless you can get all the way to this block over here. That's the basics anyway. Um, is that loop safe for the train size? Now there's a question. Um, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's only we're only using one four trains, so we're okay. Tim, Tim made it back. You're home, Tim. Ah, look at him go, all charged up and back home. I'm happy we were here to witness it. Yay! All right, so here's a coal train. Oh, oh, and it even parameterized the train stop name for me. Oh, it feels so good. I didn't even have to change the train stop name because it had the symbol in the name and the symbol in the things and it changed the symbol everywhere. Yeah, I mean, basically what you guys witnessed with Tim was just Homeward Bound, Factorio edition. So it was pretty, pretty beautiful. It's like a little pigtail, a little curly cue here. All right, so now we need a coal mine and then we need a crossing. Um, oh, refined concrete. Boo, I don't want to make that. That needs, like, lots of concrete and steel and iron and more water. All right, fine, we'll do it. We'll do it. 
And then we need more steel. Wow, these are not cheap. A hundred refined concrete, eight rails, and ten steel. And the refined concrete already cost a bunch of steel. Jeez. Uh, that's no joke. I think if I can do it all right here. Oh, we had steel over here. I guess it's all the way back there. No, it's right here. Here. Here's the steel. Um, this needs to be there. This needs to be there. This needs to be that. And then I can get the steel out. Uh, and that needs to be a pipe. Finally, a true reason to automate refined concrete at scale. Um, yeah, yeah. Another way to think about chain signals is it will never let the train stop in the next block or any of the chained... You can chain together chain signals, of course. So basically, it won't be allowed to stop until it gets to a real signal. Um, you don't think you've ever made refined concrete? Yeah, well, that's going to change. That's going to change real fast. So, so refined concrete needs steel, sticks, water, and concrete. So the the sticks can be made here. The water has to figure out something. Mm, like that. The sticks. Like so. Feed the sticks. Feed that. And then we need... Concrete. Also come over. All right, there we go. So refined concrete is a thing. And then that's going to come out and feed. Uh, these guys. <sighs> I'm going to need logistics bots for that. I do not want to bring rails all the way over here. This is an illegal technique. Don't use it at home. For now, I'm just gonna feed it some rails. You can put refined concrete on a space platform, it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, Alright, so... Where is... Rails. Throw those in there should also request at least a hundred. You always want a few rails just if you need to like reconfigure something real quick. If you're not building rails, you don't need thousands, but I always want to have a few. What are these stacked to? Rail ramps stacked to 10 only and the elevated rails stacked to 20. Oh, the supports stacked to 20. Okay. So this is then the slowdown. That's slower than I remembered it being. Um, that'll get faster with yellow assemblers, and it will get faster with a little thing I like to call a speed module, which I haven't used anywhere yet, but we have them right here. I could do an uncommon one, but no, it's fine. Ch -ch -ch. 
So. We can go a little faster. 40% faster. Maybe I should have made more than one of these assemblers. For some reason, when I was looking at that, I felt like 10 per 15 seconds. Maybe my brain was thinking 15 per 10 seconds wasn't that bad, but that's pretty bad. Um, okay, so that's all good to go. And now we need a mining drill area. I think is it. Yeah. And then we'll use the crossover. We'll use the elevated rails to do some sort of fancy train passing of each other, even though we don't need to. Could I show slowly tech tree? I don't know what you mean by slowly tech tree. You want me to slowly click through every single thing in the tech tree? Because <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But you are reminding me that we need to do some more researches. Um, I need to do automation three. That's a big one. And I'd like to do... I don't need more damage, though. I'd like to do that. That's expensive. I will do another worker robot speed because it's relatively cheap at only 150 packs. And then I should maybe do personal laser defense and then work on laser stuff for a while. Add prod modules to labs. Oh, I got all the way over here. Now you want me to go over here and do a thing? Um, okay. We can do remote view, though, so it's fine. I think. Because, yeah, productivity 4%, speed 5%. They end up... Wait, what? That's not what we wanted to do. Um, can I... Can I add these ghosty-wise? Yes. All right. We'll get our free 8% science. So you guys can stop complaining about it. There you go. Now y'all can be happy. You know what I don't have is enough drills. I always forget. 49 is not enough. Drill. 100 is usually enough. Except for the very large patches. Have I encountered any big changes yet? Not, not any big changes, no. There have certainly been lots of smaller changes that have impacted things, but like, more or less, the game plays out pretty similar, you know? I don't think anyone would look at what we've done so far and feel like this isn't like Vanilla Factorio. Like, it's pretty much been Vanilla Factorio up to now. The biggest differences have been quality existing already, and that changes quite a few things that you could do. We could have been going harder on quality so far and even set up entire chains to get uncommon stuff. The problem is you can't recycle anything. So the only way to get quality going is to get some quality as you make regular stuff but then you still have to use the regular stuff. So, what am I waiting for? I was waiting for the mining drills. I don't know why I was waiting over here for them. I don't really know what my brain was doing there. Um, I also don't want these ever again. Don't you talk to me or my son ever again. All right, good, good, good. All right, now we should be good to get some mining going. Yeah, the tank has a grid now. It's amazing. And when you get an uncommon tank, it has a big grid. It's already a six by, it's not a small grid. It's a six by eight grid. It's a huge difference.
Um, but I haven't yet, so it's not actually changed gameplay. Um, no, I have done some quality. I haven't done, like, building my base around it yet, but... Quality on tank only affects the grid? No, no, no. Uh, it affects a lot of things. So the quality affects the equipment grid size, which is a bigger change than it looks like. It affects the health, 30% more health, which is nice. And then what it does, that it actually doesn't show you here, is it gives all of the vehicle weapons 10% longer range, which is very nice. So you can see when we hop in the tank here, the, the range on the cannon here is 33 instead of 30, 22 instead of 20. The flamethrower is 9.9 .9 instead of 9. So, yeah. Pretty sweet. What is this? Our coal patch has a nubbin. Um, all right, so blueprint, mining. Here, I think. <laughs> I'm choosing to believe that that is a nose, yes. Couldn't be anything else. All right. So... We'll do that. Let the bots do their thing. I guess I could help with the belts. Oh, no, I can't. We're out of belts. Whoops. What are the odds I could handcraft enough of them to finish things off? We only need 20 more, so there we go. <laughs> Just enough. No, wait, I'm crazy. We're going to need a lot more than that. <laughs> We're going to need a lot more than that. Okay. Um, all right, so the turn needs to start, yeah, something like this. And then this is the train stop. Wait, no, no, no. We need to be like out here so that it has room to turn around. And go back. Ooh. Ooh. Is that, is that, it's calling to us. We might, no, okay, we won't. <laughs> Whoa, walls of text. Uh, okay, what'd you say? Trying, trying to decide if late game quality production will focus on making the individual parts or if it will focus on the item and then just recycling loops. Yeah, it is an interesting thing to think about when you haven't done it yet. I'm probably both. Um, Cause obviously like having quality ore is pretty nice. Wait, I shouldn't do these. These should only be chain signals for now. I haven't figured out what we need to do. This can be a regular signal there, and that would be a chain signal there. Basically anything along this path needs to be chain signals. But this would be a regular signal because right now that's all one block down there, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, being able to feed rejects into... Gosh, I can't believe that that connects. That's so nice. That would not have connected before. It looks kind of bad, but also it's so nice that that connects. Um, but yeah, obviously being able to feed other things into your factory is nice. And the recycling, as nice as it is, you only get a fourth of the items back. So even if you're in a recycling loop, you're losing 75% of the resources that you're, that you're dealing with. So I think the most efficient way to deal with quality is to like put quality modules on your miners and then you can make guaranteed, you know, uncommon plates. And then once you've got all your guaranteed uncommon plates and a decent amount of rare plates, now you can make some guaranteed rare items, but mostly guaranteed uncommon items and then roll for quality more times that way. And then by the time you're getting to more advanced stuff, you've got a lot of other rares and whatnot. 
But yeah, it's a, it's certainly a new, a whole new world. A whole new world. A new fantastic point of view. All right. Insert. I'm just gonna copy whatever I did down here. Looks great. Lots and lots of belts. How does it pick which quality to use when you handcraft stuff? I think it just uses normal only. I don't think you can handcraft higher quality. Um, I guess I don't know that for sure. Alright, so we need better belts. Part of the problem is I'm only requesting 100. I should request 300 and 100. And then we also should request the bulk inserters. 50 of them. That should help a bit. If the uncommon is guaranteed, but you have a quality module on that assembler making it, is it even more likely to get an even higher quality? Yes to one of those. It is more likely... Like, if you're starting with uncommon materials to make an uncommon green chip, then you still have your... whatever chance you had before to upgrade it, but now the chance to upgrade it will upgrade it to a rare instead of an uncommon. So like, if you have a 10% chance to upgrade quality, and you're making uncommon stuff, it's that's a 10% to get a rare now, instead of a 10% to get an uncommon. So, it does kind of chain together like that. I do not have enough logistics bots. Let's go throw a few more into the network. I also think, like, something down here would be good. You cannot get legendary or epic from the beginning. You only get uncommon and rare to start, and then later on in the game you unlock. Uh, you get epic on Gleba with a lot of packs, though. 5,000 packs. And then you need, like, late game that looks like the Aquilo pack to get legendary. So that's not for a while. All right, what am I doing? Bots. Got a rare bot. Bot upgrades is just energy capacity. Might as well throw them in the network. All right, how's research doing, by the way? Sushi belt is going strong. Uh, we have a big lack of purple. And that's because we have a big lack of copper. Are we still getting a full copper belt at the beginning at least? Yes. Seems like it. So at this point we really just need a second belt of copper ore. Which could be arranged. We've got another big patch right there that we can belt over. And then we can get two copper stacks. Yeah, it's good that they didn't let people go past rare at the beginning, I think, because it would be such a trap to try to to try to be getting rare or legendary things at this point. All right. So 
so red bots are the ones coming to me. There's still a few of those. And then do we have elevated rails now that we can use? Oh my gosh, we're an hour and five into the episode. All right, let's finish up this rail thing and call it. Bam. We're already over halfway through the 12 hour stream. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's slow. Do I need a support or can the rail ramps do it for me? If I don't have to go very far, I guess we'll find out. Halfway through and not even in space, <laughs> tragic. We're getting there, don't worry. We're getting there. All right, these need to be... Uh, chains. And then this needs to be a chain. No, 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 sorry. This needs to be a chain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's a signal, and then that's a signal. Okay. I think that all works. Um, and then we're going to have a crossover right here. With the most beautiful little baby S-Band you've ever done seen. Like, my question is, if you build the other one of these, can you just connect the two? No, it wants to make one of the supports. Can you walk on elevated rails? I don't think so. No. Ooh, we just got a tip for elevated rails. Ooh, elevated rails are used to traverse impassable terrain or other obstacles. To switch, press G while in rail building mode. Cool. Okay. So then that goes into a new block. Um, that's a chain. That's a regular... And then at the end here is a chain before it goes back in. I think I've confused myself now. <laughs> I'm con I've confused myself because I've switched sides of the track. What have I done? So this is the right side. It comes out and then goes, but that's on still only if it's going north. The one coming south should never enter this way. This is a one way, that's the problem. I need to do it like that. Um, you don't need to refuel. You get uh, Flintstone beep, 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 beep. legs. You can get out and push if you get stuck over water. <laughs> it's not the best, but it does work. Okay, so yeah, we basically just want to have something like this. So it's one way going to the right, it'll enter this block. And then it'll go along until it gets to that chain signal, and then the other one would enter here. Okay, perfect. So there's our crossing, we just need the elevated rail piece. And then we have our more belts. And get that built. Oh, you can Flintstone it remotely? That's interesting. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but that's even more, like, ridiculous gameplay-wise, or lore-wise, I should say.
Okay, get this stuff built, please. Please and thank you. And we should only need a couple of these because we've already got the yeah, power over there. Perfect. And we got the radar. And we got this to be called... Full <sighs> load. And then... I think that's all we need to do, other than that elevated rail piece. Missing four belts on the left side of the node. Oh dear. Sure are. I mean, part of the problem is these patches aren't all that big. So I'm not even getting something like two red belts of coal out of it. Okay, I think I've done my signaling properly. That's always a little bit of a gamble when you're not paying super close attention like I haven't been. But I think we're good on the two-way stuff. Did I do a regular signal? Yeah, I did. Okay. And a chain signal before it enters the shared area. Regular signal out, chain signal in. Chain signal in, regular signal out. Uh, this, those are just both chains, so that's kind of pointless, actually. Um, and then regular signal out, regular signal out, chain signal in. Okay, yeah, we did that right. Oh, there you go. You add a fish to the locomotive recipe, and then it makes sense again. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay, so all we need is that elevated rail piece, and then we're good to go. Come on, where is that thing? Maybe I should make a car, although there's kind of trees everywhere, so... A car might be annoying to try to drive around. How many do I need? 20 only? Okay, I'm gonna steal the next few. And the problem is these things need a freaking hundred at a time. So I need a thousand of the refined concrete just to get a stack of ten of these. There are also tracks to ride on. I guess that's true. I am carrying a locomotive and solid fuel, but that just sounds too easy. Also, exoskeletons. Yeah, we have blue. We have blue circuits. So uh, let me and power armor. Let me put that on our list here. Add tag. Blue chip stuff. All right, we'll put that on the list. Substations we did. More coal. I'm gonna call that checked off the list because we're about to finish that here. How close are we to space? We're pretty close. We have low density structure now. We have blue chips. Um, so we kind of just need to build the rocket silo and work on rocket fuel. And then maybe a couple other small things. So. I think we're pretty much there. Quote unquote. We'll be working towards it in the next episode. At least preparing. All right, do you have a schedule yet? No. Load, pull, unload, empty, go. Let me hop in. We're gonna get to see elevated rails in action. I guess that's only on the way back. The children yearn for space platform. Yes, they do. 
That they do. How much does a train hold? 8,000 coal? That is a lot of coal. In the interest of the episode, we will skip a completely full load. So we can see elevated rails! <gasps> we did it! And the loop-de-loop! -loop. Yes! And there is our coal train. So with that, we'll call that the end of the YouTube episode. If you're here live, don't go anywhere. We're gonna keep streaming. Five more hours, but uh, for those of you future YouTubians, as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next episode.